Hi everyone and welcome to today's video. Today we are going to be testing out and reviewing an affordable full coverage concealer. You can find this brand at Walmart. This is Koki Cosmetics. This is their new double time full cover concealer. It retails for 10 US dollars and you can find it in 12 different shades. I grabbed the shades medium honey as well as tan peach. Don't worry, I will absolutely be swatching these to see what they look like on my complexion. Now from reading the description, this formula is meant to be long lasting, smudge proof, as well as provide full coverage. With it, we'll be able to conceal blemishes, dark circles, hyperpigmentation, discoloration, you name it, this is gonna take care of that. Now this comes with a huge doe foot applicator, so one swipe coverage type of applicator. Let's go ahead and swatch these and see what they look like. Now, here are the swatches side by side. This is supposed to be tan peach, and this one is supposed to be medium honey. They look very, very similar and really, really light. I'm not sure what the finish is supposed to be on these, but I am gonna give them like four to five minutes to set, and then we'll come back to see what they look like. So I'll be right back. All right, I am back. It's been a good five minutes. And I guess, I don't know if I'm glad that these haven't changed much or if I'm disappointed that these haven't changed much because they're still really light. Okay, so this is tan peach wet and this is tan peach dry. This is medium honey wet and medium honey dry. I think I'm gonna go with tan peach for today. Based on their finish, these are definitely a lot more on the matte side, like they're not really going anywhere. Maybe just a little bit, like they do smudge a tiny, tiny bit, but for the most part, they're like staying put. Unless I like really rub down, but even then it's pretty hard. And based on their finish, I am definitely going to be pairing this one with my Smashbox and Becca corrector. So underneath the right side, you're gonna be seeing this concealer on top of my Smashbox and Becca under eye brightening corrector in the shade medium. And over on the left side, nothing. It's just gonna go straight on top of the skin. So let's get started. But first I have to put my hair up because this is, it's getting hot in here. All right, so we're starting with the corrector over here to the right and just applying a nice thin layer. Also based on the swatches, these look like they are very, very highly pigmented concealers. So I'm not gonna need a big, thick corrector underneath it. All right, so corrector is done. Let me apply foundation to the face, skipping the under eye area, and I'll be right back. All right, foundation is on, let's continue. Like I said, I'm gonna be using tan peach for both under eye areas. Um, kind of disappointed with just how light these are. <laughs> like I was expecting tan peach to be tan um, and that's why I also grabbed the medium honey just in case the tan was too, too deep. Um, but it's not, not at all, not even a little bit, so. Let's see what this looks like underneath the eyes. I have a feeling that it might look a little gray when I first apply it underneath this eye. Hopefully, as it dries down like it should, it'll it'll deepen a little bit. All right, so we're going in with tan peach. I'm gonna start, I'm gonna do one eye at a time. Just taking my little powder puff and this is how we are going to blend it out. You see what I mean? This is crazy. Crazy full coverage, my goodness. I hate, still hate the shade, but hopefully once it dries down, it won't look too bad. So it's only been like 30 seconds and it's already deepening up a little bit. And this one, I truly do not think that I'm going to need to set whatsoever, like at all. I'm not getting any shininess, I'm not, seeing it settle or anything like that like it truly just like went on and it's like there that's what this feels like um it doesn't feel heavy though for as much coverage as this is giving and for the consistency which is a little bit more on the thick side um so the consistency being what it is and the coverage being what it is it doesn't feel heavy 
at all. It is looking a little yellow, which I don't love, but hopefully as it starts to dry down, it'll the yellowness will tone down. Let's move on to the left side. All right, so right here, this is going to be interesting. All right, so let's go ahead and blend this side. Okay, so the under eye area definitely looks a bit more on the highlighted side over here, but I am counting on this toning down to this. So we're gonna give it a second. Do I want to build it up? You know, the website didn't say anything about not doing it, but it also didn't say anything about doing it. So I'm on the fence. We're gonna do it. We're gonna build it up just a tiny bit right here, right there. I'm also curious to see how it blends on top of itself, like what that looks like, whether or not you can do it. So this should help us determine that. Oh yes, you can build it up, not a problem. It doesn't move the bottom layer at all. You know what this is kind of reminding me of? It's kind of reminding me of the the Catrice One Drop Weightless Coverage Concealer, um, but that one, the consistency on that concealer is, of course, a lot more fluid. This one is a bit thicker, quite a bit thicker than that one, um, but the finish is pretty identical to one another. So they're, they seem to be like a matte finish, but a flexible matte finish. Unlike the Tarte Shape Tape, which I feel was definitely, or is definitely more on the dry side, not so flexible. Like it does kind of look a bit more dry and it feels a bit more dry, just depending on what you have going on underneath the eyes. The Catrice One Drop Concealer, as well as this one so far, doesn't feel heavy. Definitely just feels a bit more flexible. I'm gonna wait for this to dry Dry down a little bit before we move on. I don't believe I'm gonna have to set these um, because they're setting by themselves. So let me just wait for this to set and I'll be right back. All right, I'm back. It's been a good five minutes. This is set underneath the eyes. I don't particularly love <laughs> the way that this is looking, okay? Not at all, but this side, I mean, other than it looking a little yellow, which is what I'm seeing here on my screen, um, just, I don't love that, but up close, it looks, it looks okay. It looks pretty good. So let me zoom you guys in so that you can see the difference between just the concealer and the concealer on top of the corrector. All right, so do you see what I mean? does not look great not at all it looks a little gray and it looks a little dry even though i have not set it with anything however this side this side i'm okay with so there's the close-up i like it better like this i cannot wear it like this this i can already tell you i mean you guys see it i don't like the way that it looks it definitely does conceal but it it makes the under eye area look dry without anything on it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to wipe this off and I'm going to apply the corrector and the concealer underneath the left side the same way that I did the right side. I'm not going to set this because I don't think that this needs to be set. I think that it's good all on its own, um, but I'm definitely going to redo this side. So I'm going to jump off screen, take care of that, finish the rest of my makeup, and I'll be right back. All right, I am back. Makeup is done, ready to go for the day. It is currently 1.18 in the afternoon. A little bit of a later start for me, but that's okay. We're still gonna wear it throughout the entire day and see what it does. You guys know the drill. I'll be back halfway through the day to show you guys some close-ups under natural lighting, talk about how the concealer is wearing, what it is doing at that point in time. So far, I love it on top of my corrector. By itself, absolutely not. I, I just, I couldn't get myself. I'm sorry, guys. I couldn't get myself to wear it like that all day because it had already set. It wasn't concealing as much. It just looked gray. It looked yucky, okay? But I redid the left side and look at this. It looks so much better. Anyway, I'll be back halfway through the day for a quick midday check-in. I'll see you guys soon. 
All right, I am back for a quick midday check-in. It is currently 6.14. I just got a good glimpse of my under eye area, like up close. It looks a little dry. It does look a little dry, but it's still concealing really, really well. And it's not cracking. It's not cracking. It's not moving around. It already, it broke up right there and a little bit right there because of where my sunglasses just naturally sit. It always happens. Um, but other than that, it's staying put and things are still pretty concealed. So we'll continue to wear it for another three to four hours to give it a full day and see what we're left with at the end of the night. So I'll see you back here in a few more hours for my final check-in. All right, I'm back for my final check-in of the day. It is currently 8.54. So I've had this on all day long. I'm ready to wash everything off and call it a day. But before I do that, of course, I had to come back and fill you all in on what I think about this concealer after wearing it for an entire day. So let's go ahead and zoom you guys in so that you can get a good up-close look at the under eye area after wearing it for, what, almost eight hours? Something like that. All right, so this is the under eye area. This is what it currently looks like after wearing this concealer for an entire day. So there you have it. Now let's get into the pros and cons. Should I start off with the cons or the pros first? Let's do the cons. Cons first, so then we can do the pros and we can end on a high note. Uh, the cons are the shade range is abysmal. It is awful. Even the one that is labeled as tan is not really that tan i mean especially when you first watch it that looks that does not look like it's meant for anyone that is tan so that's my first gripe is that the shades are just too light for what they're labeled i mean they only have 12 shades to choose from and when you consider the shades that are meant to be tan not being so tan, it kind of minimizes the shade range even that much more. So the shade range is not something that I'm particularly impressed by, not even a little. Other than that, the finish is definitely something that you're either gonna really love or you're gonna really hate, just depending on your personal preference. Personally, if I had not paired it with my Smashbox Becca corrector, I would have hated it. It's just too dry on its own. It looks too dry. It feels, uh, I mean, I guess a little dry. I don't remember exactly what it felt like by itself, but it looked really bad. It looked really bad. The shade, of course, made the under eye area appear gray rather than concealed, which is never a good look. And had it not been for the corrector that's very hydrating and emollient, I feel like I probably wouldn't have been able to make this concealer work. So if you have your eyes on it, or if you are curious about it, just make sure that when you're trying it out, you are placing it on top of hydration, like very hydrating moisturizer or like I said a very hydrating color corrector to go alongside with it um, I felt that even though I was using the deeper shade of the two that I purchased um, and I, I placed two layers it just it still wasn't concealing enough for me over on the left side which is why I had to you know apply a color corrector underneath both under eye areas to not only make it work and conceal really well um, but to also not have it look excessively dry on its own. It just, I don't, I hate the way it looks on its own. But on top of my color corrector of this one, I love it. I love it on top of this corrector. It looks a bit smoother. It prevents it from looking excessively dry. It provides true full coverage and it doesn't move. Now we're going into the pros as you can clearly see or tell based on what I'm saying. It doesn't move. It doesn't move. It stays put. It just completely like it's not going anywhere. Like I wiped off the swatch that I just made and it's like it's not going anywhere and it's only $10. So to sum it up, cons, uh, the shade range, definitely a con. Um, the consistency you might not love or the finish you might not love just depending on who you are. Definitely has to be paired with a hydrating barrier or hydration underneath it. Otherwise, it might look a little bit too dry and you probably are not going to get full, full coverage without a color corrector. Now, the pros are the price point. It's definitely 
perfect in my opinion. Uh, true full coverage, but you do have to use a color corrector to go alongside with it and you don't have to set it. You just have to find a good color corrector to place underneath it. Um, otherwise, even though you don't set it, it could look dry. Now, will I reach for these again? Probably, especially if I'm going for a more like glam, full glam look um, and a highlighted under eye area look. But if I'm going for a more natural look or something a little bit toned down, then not these because of the shade, unless I buy a deeper shade because highlighted under eye area never screams natural or like soft. <laughs> so, so they're good, not great. So that completes today's video. Thank you all so much for watching. I truly hope that you enjoyed today's product review and that you found it helpful. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel so that you don't miss out on future videos. And also don't forget to like, comment, share, all of those things go a long way here on YouTube. They help to support the channel and I appreciate you all so much for taking the time to do any of that. Anyway, take care and I will see you all in my next video. Mwah.